Good morning, St. James. Good morning. Good morning. I want you to turn to me with page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, where we begin our service. On page 355, and our acclamation for Lent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray our collect of the day from the center of our bulletin. Together. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly will and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our lesson. The first lesson, Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I make with other ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel for those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know, all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Be we will read responsibly Psalm 51, 1 through 13. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, blot, blot out my offenses. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look 
for truth deep, deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the epistle, the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The owl has come 
for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now in the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said to this to indicate the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your children. Lord, we thank you that you have entrusted us to be their village. Lord, we thank you for those who have come forth to teach and to care for them. And we ask that you would trouble the hearts of others that you have given the gift to come forward, who has not, that they will come forward, Lord, so that the children will learn to your love through them. And Lord, we ask that everyone that they come in contact with, have you in mind and let them see your love in your people. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 of the loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. Amen. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? 
No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. My name is Carrie Graves, and I am so honored to be with you here this morning at historic St. James. Happy Jubilee year. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I was here for the kickoff with my friend and sister, Canon Stephanie Spellers, in January, and what a treat that was. She did a phenomenal job of kicking off this celebratory year of such an historic and faithful church. As far as saving me from this hour, I would have introduced myself a few weeks ago as the Canon for Communications in the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland. But as we know, changes happen in transition and that is where I am and I am so honored to still be with you here today as new things are being revealed. <laughs> so happy St. Patrick's Day, right? <laughs> Anybody wearing green? <laughs> Who loves St. Patrick's Day here? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of gone wild all over the world as a celebration, almost like Christmas in a way. I feel like with what I call commercial Christmas, we hold on to the holy, but there's a lot of partying that goes on around it, right? <laughs> but I will acknowledge St. Patrick um, because this fifth century saint, born in Roman Britain, did a lot to evangelize and take Jesus to Ireland. As Christians, we appreciate our saints everywhere in the world when someone does much to teach people to walk the way of love and to know that they have Jesus to guide them. Patrick did that for Ireland, a country that is part of my personal DNA as a white woman from the American South. And as Christians, we're okay with wearing shamrocks. I've got on a trinity that you could kind of call green in the middle because Patrick supposedly used that symbol to represent the trinity, part of our theology that is critical to our faith. That's all I'm going to say about that part of our church history and theology today. Today, March 17th, I want to talk about American history, our recent shared history, that most of us here were alive to bear witness to. That is the presentation of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 to Congress by President Johnson on this very day, March 17th. February is Black History Month, but oh, did so much happen in March of 1965. <laughs> the march is in Selma for voting rights, leading to Bloody Sunday and the presentation of this legislation in demand by President Johnson that every American citizen have the right to vote. Our scriptures today struck me in a new way as I prepared to come be with you today. And isn't that a blessing from God? This opportunity to see more deeply each time. Each one of them, the Old Testament, Hebrews, and our Gospel, mark a turning point and one that I think is critical in our journey as followers of Jesus. We are followers, right? Like the disciples? Jesus is our soul's companion, our guide, our advocate, and our teacher. And at the same time, all of those qualities within us are blessed in the scriptures today. We've reached a turning point. All of the scriptures are hinting that the time has come for us to accept the divine within ourselves and to act from that like Jesus did. It is time, as Jesus says in the gospel, for the message to be revealed. I love that meaning of the word glorified. It helps me, word trick, revealed. In the gospel, we can see it. I can almost imagine Jesus saying, yeah, no more of this. Do not tell them. Like, it, it, the time has come. It must be revealed because the hour is close. 
So as we head into Holy Week next week, Jesus will make the ultimate sacrifice, this human life, to show us that there is no finality in death, only freedom. To reject the life we have through any sort of status quo from our society, culture, families, or community, and to walk the way of love. Walk it the way the people did in Selma. If we cling to the life of this world, this society, the dominant American culture that we live in, we will lose our life. But if we die to our personas and roles and any false aspects of ourselves and follow Jesus, we will live. Last year, I went on a pilgrimage to the island of Iona on the west coast of Scotland. In the sixth century, St. Columba risked his life in a tiny coracle boat. It's kind of like a giant wooden salad bowl, not exactly a reassuring vehicle to take across stormy seas <laughs> into a bay that captures crosswinds that could blow you to kingdom come. St. <laughs> Columba risked his life to take the good news of Jesus Christ to that island and to found a monastic community there, a place to hold up the world in prayer. While I was there, my pilgrimage leader took us to the only crossroads of the island. The island is small, three miles long and one mile wide. <laughs> really small. So you can see why there's only one crossroads. <laughs> He had the 40 or so of us circle around the crossroads and told us in the nature of this week we are fast approaching that Jesus was at a crossroads in Holy Week, that he did not have to go to Jerusalem. He could have fled back to Galilee where it was safe. He did not have to go to his death. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I never thought about that before. Literally never thought about it. I didn't think, despite the struggles in Jesus' soul that, we, that are revealed in Scripture, I just thought, but that's what Jesus does. That's what he did. And that's a really high standard, you know, but he did it. There was never a doubt that he was going to go to his death. But as we know, he did have a choice. He had a choice. He was the chosen one, but he still had a choice. And we have a choice. So after that moment on the pilgrimage, uh, this concept became like a mantra in my head. Jerusalem, not Galilee. Jerusalem, not Galilee. Jerusalem, not Galilee. And it has stayed with me. Becoming beloved community and saving the world is up to all of us, every single one of us, understanding that Jesus is in us, the divine is in us. It may not actually require the sacrifice of our human life through our being murdered or sacrificed. I will confess this concept used to worry me early in my Christian journey, like, oh, if I do follow Jesus, does this mean that this has to happen, you know, if I could really, actually really do it, would I, and being human, I was, I was scared. <laughs> but I think what it means is sacrificing our human lives, whatever parts of them cling to the safety of the status quo. So by sacrificing, it means we choose honesty, choose love, choose to present our authentic selves, no matter how broken they are, to the world. Not the perfect-ish people we might want others to think we are or that we might hope that we are as followers of Jesus. We are to present who God wants us to be, who Jesus has taught us to be. So regarding the scriptures and my big aha moment, Jesus said, whoever serves must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father, 
will honor. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Friends, whoever serves me, serves love, serves highest good, builds beloved community, serves God's commandments, whoever serves me has no choice but to follow me into death and eternal life. I've never heard that before um, in the way that sentence is constructed. So if we choose to serve God and we choose to see it through, we have no choice but to die. Once we say we're going to reject our false or inauthentic selves, the false and greedy ways of our culture, the selves who work to appear to be what our communities want us to be, once we say we're going to reject that, we have no choice. We will die to that life, and we will gain the life of love in the beloved community. That's pretty amazing, right? For me, it's so easy to come to church and to know and to study and to pray and still get caught up in my junk, you know, thinking I'm doing the right thing. And So how, how do we do this? It's a big job, so big that the mission of Jesus and his death and sacrifice has echoed throughout the millennia to keep that good news coming because we don't probably we don't really get it yet you know <laughs> some do just like the disciples they didn't really get it <laughs> for a while so how to do it we listen for God's call to each of our unique lives each and every one of you has God inside you calling you to your special role in God's kingdom we listen to the stories of our neighbors and we act we come together to make decisions that build a community, God's kingdom, where all are treated fairly and have what they need. And we hold public officials of whatever political flavor accountable to the same. We pray and we act. This is what the king of the Jews did. The king that no one could understand as a true king because he was the opposite of what human brains then and now could understand as king. A nonviolent, loving, healing presence who was a force of nature. He was mocked and tortured for being called king. I kind of picture a sad and cheap, in today's world would be on cardboard, sign <laughs> written by Pilate as the final act of loving and clinging to the life of the Roman Empire, the wrong life, <laughs> mocking Jesus as the king of the Jews. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. too was the opposite of what a white patriarchal society would call a king, wasn't he? He, was, he acted in nonviolence with dignity and grace and love and bravery. He marched the way of love, proclaiming the beloved community. He advocated, guided, and taught. And he did make the ultimate sacrifice while he was in his flesh, as we heard, this human life. And he knew, I believe he knew, the way the winds were going to blow. And he went forward sick, with the flu, possibly, as I understand, every day, but particularly the day he died, went forward and faced it. He died for all of us, for this country, society, and culture, that we might truly build a nation more reflective of the kingdom of God. In referencing the Southern Christian Leadership Council, Dr. King, with other ministers, wrote in January of 1957, this conference is called because we have no moral choice before God but to delve deeper into the struggle and to do so with greater reliance on nonviolence and with greater unity, coordination, sharing, and Christian understanding. I like that they use the word greater 
because it can be a bit intimidating. I don't know about for you guys, but for me to think, oh, I've got to be just like Jesus. You know, there's that part of us that's still the kid in Sunday school, I think, that's like, I've got to do, I've got to exactly do that. And then we come into our adult faith and it's like, wait, it's really complicated. <laughs> it's really complicated. How do I do that? So Jesus and Dr. King are the real kings to me. They are heroes. But I know that doesn't mean they did all the work. They aren't heroes who come in and swoop and everything's all better. I must learn from them and do my best to follow them. So I have a tendency to preach long, so I'm going to do my best here not to keep you too long. Bishop Curry always jokingly notes, as you guys know, that he's about to finish his sermon, whether he is or isn't. <laughs> so let me try. I'm not promising like Bishop Curry does. <laughs> I promise I'm going to finish. <laughs> Wrap it up. But I'm going to try. And on that note, do you know who one of my biggest modern day heroes is? Michael Bruce Curry. I love him. Wow, I could <laughs> feel myself. I don't cry, but I felt that just then. He is love incarnate to me. I actually have a reputation in the Episcopal Church for being that fangirl. Some have even said stalker, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> so much so that people have tried to keep me away from him at times. He was literally in the diocesan office one day to meet with Bishop Sutton, and Caroline Baumgartner said, don't tell Carrie that he's here. But then I heard, and I lurked in the hallway. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a rather fun joke that I proudly claim. I know that Bishop Curry is calling me to do what he does, to walk the way of love, to build beloved community, Let's take just a moment to pray, as Canon Spellers did in this very pulpit, what once was his pulpit in January, for the health and wellness of our beloved leader called to guide and teach us, just in silence. To stand here preaching in a pulpit where he preached for 12 years will forever be a highlight in my life. I am so grateful to you, Father Meadows, for your leadership and for asking me to be here today. And to you, the people of St. James, you are an amazing community of faithful people and words cannot express how honored I am to be here. Just love. So let's keep asking ourselves and asking God each day what each of us is called to do. How we, or how am I, to reject the life of this world in whatever tiny or big ways? How am I to die? How are we to die in whatever tiny or big ways to further the coming of the kingdom of God on earth? If we can do this, then we can teach our children to do the same, our beloved children here. Children who are born with the clear eyes of love, but are too soon corrupted by the violence and restrictions of the life of this world. So let's do our work on ourselves and follow our leaders, follow Jesus, follow Dr. King, follow Bishop Curry, follow Father Mother Meadows, so that we may raise our children in a new world, a new nation, a true community of love. Amen.
please stand as you are able to say the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the back of your call. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Baltimore metro area, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widow and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, we pray for Siobhan, Shirley, Vashti, Luther, Barbara, Rosie, Edna, Calvin, Edith, Roosevelt, Vita, Anne Holly, Mercedes, Mildred, Howard, Marion, Siobhan, Evangeline, Janice, and Wendy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, such as Margaret Boone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Good morning, St. James. If you could go ahead and take your seats <coughs> quickly. Welcome again to our guest preacher and celebrant, Ms. Carrie Graves. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, St. James, I commend to your reading all of the announcements as I will only highlight just a few. Today is the last day to submit your Easter lily envelope, so please make sure you do that today. If you have an announcement or a prayer request, please send that information to our parish assistant, Jennifer, no later than Wednesdays at noon, and her email address is listed in the call. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Palm Sunday, and at 4 p.m., we will host the Baltimore Community <laughs> Concert Choir at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. $10 patrons are still being accepted. As you know, this is a free concert. However, there will be a free, offer, free will offering that will help defray costs. Now, on to some exciting news for our 200th Jubilee. If you missed last week, we heard a special announcement that the Re Reverend Raphael Warnock will join presiding bishop Michael B. Curry for a gala on June 7th. Yes, that is. We can keep going. I would like to call forward um, subcommittee chairs who will briefly share some important information. So we have Ms. Carolyn Cole, you can go come forward, and Ms. Denise Day. Thank you so much, Autumn. Good morning, church. Good morning. I learned something this morning that the Reverend Canon Carrie Grace, I know, will be joining our Jubilee because she told us this morning about Bishop Carrie and how much she loves Bishop Carrie, and that's the way we feel. So get your table of guests ready. June 7th. We're going to show up and show out. You're going to be dressed up. You're going to do your thing. You can organize your table. Call up your family. Call up your friends. Let's make this an extraordinary evening. 6 p.m. at Martin's West, June 7th. Doors will open promptly at quarter of 6 there will be a VIP reception 
beginning at 6, and everyone attending, it will be a VIP. You're going to enjoy engaging, meeting marvelous people, making it a grand event for St. James Episcopal Church. Start looking for your outfit, start getting your family and friends, and make your table. And guess what? Every table will be a good spot. It will be good food, seconds if you need it, great dessert, and of course, in the beginning, when we have our VIP reception, there will be wine, uh oh, hors d'oeuvres, cheese, fruit, and we're going to make it a glorious evening. Now, you know, reservations are 125 per person, and you can make two installments, and some of you have already paid. So today, you have an assignment. This evening, today, whatever, start calling your family or friends, make them list it, and say where they're going to be on June 7th. I have my table together. Thank you. Good morning, St. James. Good morning. I am really excited about June 7th after listening to Carolyn. Thank you for that. Uh, before we get to June 7th, though, we are going to need help from our St. James family. We're going to have a spectacular journal that everyone will be receiving on June 7th. And it's going to be, you know, with some of the customary things in it, some history about St. James, um, some pictures. Uh, some um, artifacts, things of that nature, but where we need your help are the ads that will be going into the journal. So today is not to give you, load you up with information about the journal, but it's a heads up day, a heads up that we're gonna be coming back to you, we're gonna be giving you forms that you can fill out, forms that you can talk with your neighbors, your family, your friends. Um, we're looking for people that want to list patrons in the ad, in the journal, collect names to list as patrons, and also look among who you know that might want to place an actual ad, and, and whether it's advertising their business, or a memorial, or just a congratulatory message. I'm very proud to be third generation St. James. I know there are others here also, and even if you're first generation, this is a church that we need to be proud of. So we've got to get out there and tell everybody, give them a little snippet of St. James history. How many other churches can say what we can say about our church? So we need to be proud, spread the word, and invite people to participate by taking out an advertisement in our journal. Um, I invite you to look at the sheet that was inside the call today. If you have any questions about what's coming up with the journal, feel free to reach out to Autumn or myself. Our numbers are at the bottom of the ad. And we will be coming back as we move through Holy Week and Resurrection Sunday. We will be back to you with more detailed information. Thank you. Good morning. I come to you wearing two hats, but I'll bring my 200th anniversary hat first. Uh, we have um, uh, two initiatives that are going on with the Fiber Arts Group, and if you are someone who is sewing, quilting, we've had people who are, are, are sewing for us, we have people who are creating macrame work, we're going to try to create for you wonderful pieces that represent our history. But you do have a part, just like with that's like you just heard about the ads. You too can be a part of St. James's history, and we hope the piece that we create, just as Father Levington created that piece all of those years ago that is here now, the piece that we create today will go on forever. So if you've been in the, come to the front of the church, if you've come in the front doors, you've seen a quilt square and you've seen our display. 
and you've seen this wonderful piece. We are going to create the congregation. You are going to create what is called a signature quilt. Every parishioner can then will get a, a square like this, and in this center piece, you can put whatever message you would like to, representing your family, your friends, your place in St. James history. You can remember those who've gone on. I know there are people who are not here and their families are no longer here. We're gonna make sure they have a square so everyone will have an opportunity to create. Where did this come from in St. James's history? Some of this white you see here on the pieces that you will have represent fair linen that we've had on the altar over time. And usually with fair linen and things on the altar, we burn them, we give them away. We decided what better place to move our history forward is to give the now the opportunity to do this. So to that end, and these will be in the porch of the church, we've created a template for you in advance so you can think about what would you like your message to be on the St. James signature quilt for the 200th anniversary. So you can take a template from the back, think about what you'd like to say, and then starting the Sunday after Easter, you can come to the back, Dominique, um, Verna Jackson, there'll be a number of representatives from our committee. They will then give you a, a square, and you can sit right then and create your square using a micron pen. Then over the summer, depending on the number of squares we have, you may see a God's eye come from this. You may see um, a quilt that has Bible verses on it. We, it will be grown from the places that you come from to give us these. So go in the back before you leave. You can take one. They'll be back there so that you can create your portion of what you want to leave as your St. James legacy. Point of personal privilege, quickly. I want to thank everyone who has thought it not robbery to let their young people participate in our book study. As you have seen, probably, if you may or may not notice every week, I am a Kentucky basketball fan. I just love SEC. I love basketball, but I really do love SEC basketball, and I've just been wearing it all the time. We, they've had a good time. As a result, we're extending this book study because we just don't have enough time to get in all the juiciness, and I promise I'm going to send this out to all the communications people. We're going to extend it to the first and second Sundays in April because next week we want to talk about passion and we want to talk about Jesus's passion along with the passion of basketball. And then we also want to then focus on the finalization of the book. So bring your young people. They do not, they can come. If they, oh, we missed the first part of the book, doesn't matter, just come and join us. But I just wanted to take that announcement. Thank you. All right, St. James. So. There is an expectation, I'm expecting, not hoping, that we will have 100% participation in some form or fashion. You've heard three different ways in which you can participate in our Jubilee. Are there any first time visitors to St. James? Would you please stand? We have a mic so you can tell us your name and who you're visiting with or from. My name is Andy Graves, and I'm the other half of Carrie Graves <laughs> up there. <laughs> and it's been wonderful to be here this morning with all of you all. This is a wonderful community. Uh, and I just so much, so much appreciate your welcoming us here today. This has been wonderful. Great. Thank you for joining us. All right. If you have a birthday or an anniversary or are traveling, you may now come forward. Amen. Our prayer time for anniversaries, travelers, birthdays. Oh, uh, here comes the birthday. Oh, here comes the man from Safeway. And you better not make no false. He follows me around the store. Sometimes I turn around, he's standing. My <laughs> Brother Ali, is it your birthday or are you traveling? Heather's birthday. Heather, oh, Heather's birthday is today. Oh, Heather's not feeling well. Amen, Kelly. You're traveling. Come on right here. Family? Oh, family anniversary. Amen. Come on, step a little closer. 
move over just a little bit. Heather's birthday. Amen. Anyone else? Oh, this is so special. Kelly, where are you going? Hmm? Atlanta. Family, friends, personal sense of you. So God, God to our sister who we just adore for the work and the sacrifice that she makes and her, her generational sacrifices and all of the wonderful things she does. As she travels, Lord, we ask that you be with her, that your angels minister to her along her journey, that she finds peace, that she finds joy, and that she leaves crumbs from your table so others may experience the same joy and love that she has, that it too might be infectious. And so we ask that you give her safe travel. To our dear Heather, God bless her in her body, her mind, and her spirit that she might feel your presence, that she might feel better. But we ask that you bless her on this time of birthday, that you would give her many, many, many more years, and that this church would be her friend, and that whenever she's sorrowful or disturbed or falls, God, that not only are you with her, but we will be with her as a family. So on this day, we raise her up, and we say, God, and we celebrate her life and her years and her family. And then we ask that you give her the joy of your salvation in this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a special, special prayer for family to be together for eight years. And, and, and the work that you do with your young men that you've not, not just adopted, but the scripture is very clear. When one is adopted, one is as if one was born and had every right as an heir and so we thank God for the two of you and the joining of this family. And we thank God for how your lives will be marvelous and that God will raise you up and, and give you strength and give you glory and that God will take you to high places and you'll stand before kings and queens proclaiming that family meant everything now and it will mean everything then. And that you will provide us with generations and generations to come whether it be spiritual or natural, but you will provide and God will be with you every step of the way. And so as they continue on their journey, Lord, we thank you for how one day they had it in their hearts that they would take these two and they would be not only heirs, but joint heirs with you going forward in the kingdom, showing power and strength and authority. And God, that you would be with them and that you never leave them nor forsake them, and that they would never want for anything, but you should supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory. And you know the plans that you have for them to do them marvelous and to do them good, and that they would have health and strength, and the plan comes from you. And so God, whatever you do for them, you do it according to your word, and that every day in the future they will continue to be one as you and your father as one because that's what family is all about bless them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. bless you bless you bless you bless you fred and philip bless you amen 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 thank you uh, to all of you yesterday who came out um, for Marsha Thompson and Michelle Howard and Martin Austin who led us in a great, not only strategic planning, but the future of our church. So remembering our past and envisioning. So we began to envision new future yesterday, our church leaders. And so all of those who made the sacrifice on yesterday, we want to say thank you to you. Right after church, amen, give them a hand. Amen. It was wonderful. You will begin to see the fruit of their labor of these leaders pretty soon. Um, also, um, right after church, all of our young people, um, age 12 and up, who came up last week for our beginning orientation of confirmation, right after church, I want you to come up to the high altar. We will be in discussion about what we believe, the Nicene Creed, and how that impacts our lives. So that would be our topic for today. So just come right up. Confirmation will be April the 21st. Bishop Eugene Sutton will make it his last visit to any church in our diocese as the diocesan bishop. 
And on that day, we will have confirmation, reception, and for those who have come into our church body um, from other reformations, if you want to be received, and to those who are coming from other churches in the Episcopal Diocese, if you want to be recognized and prayed for, uh, on that day, we ask you to come on April the 21st, 9.30 in the morning. It's going to be a very, very special day. Very special day indeed. To all of you, we love you, we adore you, we thank you for your sacrifice because it's only because of your giving and it's only because what you do for Christ that will last. Um, we ask you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice unto God, our offertory.
dedicate this Eucharistic prayer to Mrs. Boone, the sister of our own Gary Brooks, who was memorialized on this week. We ask that God may provide the eternal rest for her soul that she so richly deserves. And that you would give strength to our brother Gary in his grief that he too may find peace in this storm. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we're able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of his new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Sister Boone, James, Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep his feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God to you, the people of God.
want you to join me on page 365 for our post-communion prayer, page 365. As in our tradition, let us pray together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singing of the heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God that passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.